Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to you. This is another episode of Encounter. We have Dr. Sheikh Noor Kabani, who is still with us in the studios of the NBC for another episode. And in the previous one, we mentioned that uh, Dr. Sheikh Noor is of the descent of uh, Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi from your mother's side from Cyprus. Correct. Correct. Uh, how does that feel? <laughs> I feel the energy. I mean, I don't see uh, the blood or the, but I feel the energy that is flowing through me, through him. Um, I feel that uh, love and mercy in my heart, strong, and uh, it's a, it's an honor for me. Has it always been? Have you always felt it this way, or has it come over time? Since I'm a child, I feel I felt it that way. I always felt immense love and respect, and uh, that brings along shyness. When you have respect then you have the shyness uh, that, you know, everybody is better because you, when you're respecting somebody, you respect somebody that's higher than you. So I always had that since the beginning, that I always respected the others. Can I say that the stronger you glow, the stronger the light you project on others and you see even better things and good things in others also? Correct, correct. Because you start focusing on the good things that in others. With that light that is, is growing and shining, you see the good things in people you stop seeing the, the bad things in people. For someone to start digging into the spiritual world, um, well, before we start talking about that, in the previous episode, we said that um, you're the direct descendant of uh, Jalaluddin, uh, Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi, and you're spreading the message of uh, the Sufi culture. If I want to get into the spiritual aspect of the Sufi culture, what would be the first thing you would tell me to start doing or to stop doing? If you, if you want to join the spiritual culture, the first... I would probably need a, a, a teacher to guide me how. Right. Yeah. The first thing, I will tell you the name of my teacher. All right. And then I'll leave it up to you whether you want it or not. But then I will give you something that you can do on your own. And that's what we call zikrullah. This is the chanting we do. And I think other people, they call it mantra. Mantra, yeah. This, this mantra puts you in a zone, puts you in like a rhythm. So we, will, we, we usually we give Allah, 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 100 times a day, 1,000 times a day. But you have to be in a, a, a closed area so you're not distracted and put a white sheet over yourself. You put a sheet. So you are inside that sheet. Uh, There's separate. nothing distracting your mind. Right, also. nothing at all. And okay. you close your, the, we, we tell people to close their eyes and only concentrate on the breath. Allah, Allah. So you're taking one breath in and getting it out. Can I try it? So you, let's say I have uh, a, the, sheet. a sheet on me. Right. I'll close my eyes and every time. Say, Allah. So I inhale. You inhale. I say Allah. Allah. And or I you exhale. can say who? Uh, Allah. Allah who? Allah who or who by itself or Allah. But so when I Allah. say it, I'm exhaling. Right. So that's why you say the who to exhale. You say, who, 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 who. So I can see that you're inhaling just before saying everything. Right. And you keep your focus on the breath? On the breath. Because when you keep your focus on, on the breath, you keep your ears on the sound coming out. And you focus also on, the, on, on, on your breath also. Right. So nothing, there's less things that will distract you. Right. And who means unknown. So... Allah. Allah. Then we can do who? Who? These are basically the two things that we practice. But who is easier for non-Muslims? Of course. Uh, because it's, it's like who, who. It's just a very calm noise. Yeah, it, it uh, has, a, even you saying it, I feel that it has a calming effect right. on the person. Right. So that means the un, unknown, unseen. So, um, I don't, we are on live TV, but, or, or we are on TV, but, Sometimes I experience when I'm saying who, I see myself flying between stars. I see myself going. So you're floating. you're floating. You're floating. You feel lighter. Right. That's what you need to practice on, to float. So probably that's why uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, meditation and prayers. This is what will help those people who go to see doctors and the results show nothing. And uh, you tell them, okay, you have to see a psychologist. And they say, no, you don't need sedatives. And... So this is what probably people need to start doing. Right. 
uh, if it's not prayers, to start meditating. Meditating and uh, chanting. 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 Chanting and music and and focusing kind of on the on the on the, on the breath. Oh wow, very interesting. Thank and you for easy. sharing it. You're very welcome. And it's easy. You don't have to do any special thing. You just it looks very easy. Yes. Go, you can do it in your office. You can do it at home. You can do it uh, at school in your car. Is there a specific time or is it any time? The best time is at night. All right. Because the whole world is sleeping. You're the only one awake. Before you sleep? After you sleep. You let everybody sleep. Yeah. If you, if you want, if you're tired, you can take a few hours of sleep. And then you wake up around 3 or 4 in the morning. Yes. And then you start, everybody is sleeping at 3 or 4 in the morning. Yes. Even the one that goes to parties, they sleep at <laughs> 3 4 in the morning. It's finished. There's yes. nothing out there. Yeah. Every, that is the time to do that uh, meditation. Uh, because you are with your beloved at that time. You know, at night, people are with their beloveds. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We can be frank. We're, we're grown-ups. Yeah. But you choose your beloved. If your beloved is the Lord, is God, then at that time, you are with your beloved mentioning his name. You're going, who, who, who. Beautiful. Very calming. Who, very calming. calming. At that time of the, of the night, three, four in the morning, a couple hours before sunrise. And this is probably how you start getting into the spiritual world. Uh, you start some practices. Um, what else would you recommend me to do, to do or not to do? We, we teach uh, tajarrud. Tajarrud means detachment. 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 Uh, we teach to detach from the pleasures of this world. If you want the pleasures of the other world, you have to leave room for them. So slowly, slowly, we, we practice detachment, and that's what they call seclusion. So the detachment from the pleasures of the world is what will make you less greedy? Detachment from the pleasures of the world, starting with eating once a day. Eating once a day? Once a day. Do you eat once a day? I tried, but I failed. Yeah, no, but uh, that's quite something. That, that but you're dropping... It, it is believed that people should be able to live a normal life eating once a day. Yeah, we fast. Yeah. So when yeah. we fast, exactly. we, can, we don't eat the whole day. We yeah. eat once at night time. But nowadays, we eat until morning because of the love of food. Yes. So one of the main things is to detach from other loves. If you want to be with your beloved, if you love somebody, you don't love many. You just concentrate on that one. You cannot have two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't work that way. No. Your, your love is not focused and is not pure. So to love the Lord, to love God, you have to take away the other loves. And the uh, first love is the, the one, the love of the stomach, they say. Shahwatul batan, the desire of the belly. <laughs> so that has to start going, uh, going away. So uh, in seclusion, when somebody is in seclusion by the order of their master, they offer them seven olives a day. That's it. Seven olives. Seven olives a day and a piece of bread. Okay. That's for the whole day. Or they offer you dal. One, okay. Because okay. some people, yeah. they yeah. take the lentil, one, one cup of dal. That's Pulses. It. Yeah, but um, they live a normal life if, when they do it. They do. They do. But they are not anymore attached to the pleasures. Now, nowadays, if you go downtown, you like to go into this shop to eat something, into this yes. restaurant to eat something. Yes. So that's kind of pleasures of the world. So when you detach them from the love of food, they don't go anymore into, into places the like The detachment that. from food goes a lot deeper in terms of, it goes beyond the physical aspect of it. Because then you're not playing with your taste buds, you stop, you stop playing with your mind, um, you stop looking for things, because then food becomes a less important part in your life so that you can focus on other things because you have more time to do other things. True, but not that's, completely. That's, that's probably just 1% of right. what it is. It starts there. So our teacher has told us, uh, because he knows it's hard for us, eat twice a day. We eat only twice a day. We try not to snack in between. Nowadays, people snack and eat, but we try to keep it twice so a day. So that's why when you fast, is you, are, you eat before the fasting right. and right after for iftar right. and all. Right, yeah. that's the clue. That's, that's like uh, a, a, that's a, the guide. a sign. Yeah. 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 Eat right. twice a day, that's what's allowed. Uh, slowly, slowly, uh, you, you start going into that path of detachment from other pleasures of the world. And there are many others, but uh, slowly, slowly. We cannot uh, do it all at the so same right, time. All right. Uh, food aside, what would be the next thing to do? Um, th there's, there's a lot of uh, 
there's a lot of misunderstandings in this world. There's a lot of anger in this world. You say that, and a lot of stress. So uh, we live in an angry world. Yes, we live in an angry world. Um, uh, just by driving around, uh, people are very stressed. They curse, they swear. Uh, everyone is in a hurry. So how, how do you deal with this? Well, what is anger first? Anger is the boiling of the lower self for revenge. But that's an instinct. That is, the ang that is an instinct. So, but we are supposed to control that instinct. So anger is when, you, when somebody seeks revenge because his inner self is just boiling. Boiling. Um, and that happens when something does not go your way. Yes. When, somebody, uh, when something does not go the way of what they want, they get angry. That is the opposite of rida, the opposite of acceptance. Anger is the opposite of acceptance. So if somebody accepts what's happening, they don't get angry. No. But you need some anger, right? A little bit. You need anger as, as, a, as a servant, not as a master. You need to perfect anger. Sufism is about perfection of all what we have inside of us. When you perfect anger, you reach courage. You become courageous. If you are angry at a, at a, at a principle that is humane, a humane principle, principle that affects the whole world, you're angry that is not being supported or allowed, then you become courageous to defend it. Nowadays, because you believe in it. You believe in it. So your anger now is channeled for something good, not something destructive, but rather something uh, that will help. That's why to defend what's truth, what's right, is nowadays missing. So the, 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 that part of defending is where you need that little anger, but it's not anger. It's just the courage. urge, courage. Comes courage. There we go. Wow. Comes okay. courage. So there's a, mis there's a misconception about uh, the courage. Yes, I mean, you don't have, you have, you have also to prevent something called tahawur. Tahawur means uh, recklessness. You become reckless. Okay, you have I'm to keep your head on your shoulders. <laughs> so courage to a point, but not to a point of recklessness, that you destroy uh, yourself. Or cause harm others. to yourself or right. others. So you yeah. go up to a certain uh, place, and then you don't become reckless. So it's a balance. That's what we're saying. It's a spiritual imbalance. So our teachers, they teach that. And that's what's missing nowadays in the world. These Sufi principles that are taught by peers, how to control what God gave you. God gave us shahwa, desire, to be with the other, uh, with, the, uh, with, with, with ladies, because we're men. But that is necessary. Why? Because if you don't have children, how would you sustain human beings on earth? It's the cycle of life. It comes so, and goes, it comes and goes. Yeah. So you need, you need that uh, desire so your generations keep coming on earth. Yes. So, but that is, you're channeling that desire in a good way that benefits humanity. Anger, you can channel it in a good way that benefits humanity. But it is a, such a fine line in terms of what is benefiting humanity and what is personal greed. Right. That is what's called Sirat al mustaqim The straight path that Muslims always ask their Lord for. They say, oh, our Lord, guide us to the straight path. That means don't guide us to the two extremes. So you, you stay true to what you want to achieve. Right. By not destroying or being reckless. So you, we don't go to extremes. That is the wasat, they say. Wasat is the middle ground. The middle All right. way. All right. So the that's why you keep the balance. The balance. And that's what's missing also. Be, people become extremists. Why? Because they have shifted too much. They are not balanced. So they need to come to my peer, and we can balance all of them, no problem. Dr. Sheikh Noor, um, I have one of my favorite uh, quotes from uh, Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi. If you allow me, can I, can I read it? Yes. I want to know what you think, what is your interpretation of it? Uh, it says, run from what's comfortable, forget safety, Live where you fear to live. Destroy your reputation. I mean, from what you read is, uh, from what I understand is always, if you're in a comfort zone, move away from the comfort zone. Uh, forget safety is not to be reckless, but uh, just be careful. Uh, leave, from, leave where you fear to live is 
face your fears, but destroy your reputation is stop being a reflection of society. But this is my humble understanding of it, but I would, like, I would love to hear what you have to say about it. The, their, their meanings are oceans, so each one of us can fish a meaning. Yes. So each, you can have an understanding, I can have an understanding, other people can have other understandings. So what I say does not limit the meaning. But I want to know but what you think of it. I would say run from what? Run from what's comfortable. That's what we talked about, detach. All right. Uh, they, when I used to work as a doctor, my colleagues will say, oh, we're stressed out. Let's go to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> they call them comfort food. Comfort food. Love giving food. <laughs> yeah. So when you eat uh, chocolate and yeah. uh, snacks, these are comfort food. Some people just like eat ice cream forever. Uh, because, so run from what's comfortable. That means detach from the pleasures of this life. What we talked about a little bit. All right. So All right. run, detach from the pleasures. That's, that's how I can understand it. Uh, this is the Sufi teaching, detach from the pleasures. Forget safety. Forget safety. That means don't, be, um, don't think that you are safe. Um, In a comfort zone? No, no. It's, it's something else. Uh, people think that they are safe because they have money, they have uh, houses, they have cars, they have all of that. So they feel, they feel this world protects them. So this world does not stay for anybody. So this world will not protect you. You will leave and go. So forget that I am safe in this world. No, this world you're not safe in. That means you will leave it. You will go somewhere else. It doesn't mean that it's dangerous. It's no. just the interpretation of it. Interpretation. That means, latar uh, can they say in Arabic, that means uh, don't go to something other than God. People think that they are safe, for example, with this materialistic uh, object or with this uh, goal. So it's just being careful. Being careful and oh. don't go to other than God. And then live, it says, live where you fear to live. That is... Uh, under the gaze of God. To be under the gaze of the Lord, is, they call it taqwa. Then taqwa. That, that's what they see. They go fear Allah. A lot of our imams, they say, be God conscientious and fear the Lord. So live there. Uh, live where you fear to live. Means always be under the constant gaze of your Lord. Why would people fear to live under the gaze of the Lord? Because if they do something wrong, they might lose the love of the Lord. Aha. Wow, that's very interesting. So they, because they want to be with their beloved. Everybody has a beloved, and your beloved is the Lord. So you don't want to be upsetting and losing his love, like we do nowadays with our spouses. You know, you don't want to upset them because you don't want to lose their love or your loved ones. Same thing. But you have to live there because you cannot escape that. There's no place that God is not present in. So live with him, by him. And uh, finally, destroy your reputation. That's what we were talking about. You have, to, you have to live, you have to know God by God, not by yourself. So your reputation has, means that who you are has to go away. You cannot know God by who we are. We know God by him. So you have to leave yourself. So you have to it. experience him to know him. To know him, by him. That is very deep. We, that is we, very, uh, very deep. <laughs> there's no you anymore. There's there no is no you, you there's anymore. No you. So there's, there's no only you. one with the God? We, that's how we can understand. That's how but, we understand it right. as, of, as we mere mortal humans. Right. All right. We say we be with God. Instead of saying one with God, that means we unite with God. We, we don't believe such a thing exists because God does not unite. But that's what we believe. God is single. But we be with him how he knows. We don't know yet. When we experience that, we know what that means. Can I ask you one, uh, one last quote before uh, we end this program? Uh, Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi says, what you seek is seeking you. <laughs> yes. Uh, how does that relate in, in this modern world? If you're looking for something, it's already looking for you? A spirit is looking for your spirit. Aha. That's what it means. You're seeking a spirit, a spiritual uh, uh, enlightenment and spiritual uh, comfort. But what you're seeking is already seeking. There's another spirit seeking you. Spirits, they unite. Spirits become one 
in, in the divine presence. Spirits can unite, but of not course. with God. So something is seeking you, and that, that is the spirit of your guru, the spirit of your teacher. That one is seeking you. Before you seek it, it seeks you. And it finds you, and then you find it. Wow. That's what we... Beautiful, we beautiful. Thank you for explaining uh, these uh, couple of quotes for us. Uh, before, before closing uh, this interview, can, can I ask you, what is your drive for spreading the message of Sufism around the world? What, what keeps you motivated? How do you find so much joy doing it? And uh, why you do it? I'm, tried, I'm, I'm trying to unite with my teacher. That's, that, that's my drive. You unite with the one through the many. You unite with the one through the many. Through the many. This is, this is my drive. Okay, can you explain how do you unite with the one uh, through the many? You, uh, you see the one in the many. Is that kind of a, a training you give yourself? You see yourself? God in everything. Okay, okay, okay. So that helps you become more spiritual. You, the in... only way to reach God is to reach everything first. You have to know all creation. With that, you can, know, you can reach your Lord. So hopefully if I want to be more spiritual, I should probably be more like you? More like my teacher. More like your teacher who's taught you to be like this. Yes. All right. Well, beautiful. And um, you, have, you, have, you have brought a book here, right? Yes. Which this is, is The this Sufi Science of Self-Realization, Realization. which is written by your father. Yes. Who is uh, Sheikh. Sheikh, Sheikh Mohammed Hisham Kabani. Correct. And um, the, the book is about the science, the Sufi Science of Self-Realization, which probably helps you find your path yes this is a gift from us to you because you're you very, very kind to us and this will help a lot of people answer their questions this book is written by my father how to find the perfect uh, guide and that's my father my grandfather's picture that's your grandfather that's my grandfather wow you look similar <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, he so, has. He, what does he have in, in his hand? Is that a? They, it's a. It's beads. It's a beads. And in Christianity, they call it rosary. Yeah. Rosary. Yeah. So basically, you, you use it to chant. Yes. When I said we can do it hundred times, the beads is usually hundred uh, 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 pieces. Why hundred? Sometimes it's two hundred. Sometimes one thousand. It depends. Sometimes it's thirty-three. There's no number to that. You can. It can be anything. Okay, the, the, the number, the, does the number have a specific importance? Well, 100 uh, is, the most, uh, is the number that is mostly done. For example, we bring, we say 100 astaghfirullah a day. 100 times uh, we ask forgiveness from our Lord. We say 100 times la ilaha illallah. We say 1,500 times Allah, Allah. So we do it 15 times. So 100, 100 is the perfect number. Because everything above 100 you just multiple, is just uh, multipli multiples of hundreds. So if I were to do the meditation, Allah, who probably 100 times would be a good start? It would be a good start. It will be a very good start. It will be a very good start. Very good start. I'm sure many people can. And it doesn't take time to do 100. It's almost Allah. 10 minutes. It's if you do it yeah. correctly and you focus on the breathing, 5 minutes, 10 minutes maximum. But does your breathing come longer with time also? So it takes more time then because you get deep into this. You get more involved yes. into the meditation. You then. start getting into a trance. You start seeing things. And you become... One, one more, more or directed to yeah, the one. Yeah. You direct yourself to the one. We don't, we don't become the one because we're not gods. We don't believe that in Islam. We, we, we believe that God is one, but there is a way to be with God, to be with the one. How? We don't know yet. He knows, but he, that, that is not something to be said. That is something to be tasted. And experienced. And experienced. 100%. Um, Dr. Sheikh Noura Kabani, thank you very much uh, for being uh, with us uh, for this episode of Encounter. It has been such a pleasure having you, a great honor. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the book. Um, before we close it, would you like to say anything before we, we wrap up this episode? Yes, I, I'm very grateful to you and your oh. company to allow me to share some of the wisdoms of my, uh, my teacher. And uh, we do have a center in Mauritius, we do have a center on this island, uh, this very beautiful island that I found so much love in it. 
uh, and I hope I can come again. There's a website uh, where people can yes. have more information? Yes, our website is sufilive.com. Sufi Live. Sufi Live, like Sufi and Live, like Live TV, sufilive.com. And on that uh, website, there are centers. If you click the centers, you will find our centers around the world. And our center in Mauritius is in that, uh, web on that website. Please look at it and contact us in Mauritius. Uh, well, thank you again very much. Or shall I say, uh, Malikum Salam. Oh, Malikum Salam. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of this episode of Encounter. Thank you very much for being with us. If you have any questions, drop us an email. It's encounter at mbc.itnet.mu for any suggestions, queries, questions on the topic discussed or on the guests. And uh, until next week for another episode, we'll say bye-bye for now.